attached. The designated shelters were activated and will be managed with COVID-19 protocols. rises in the Bahamas as a country braces for its first hurricane of the season. Good morning, everyone. I'm LaDawn Davis, and this is the Morning Edition. Thank you so much for waking up with us. The Prime Minister, the Most Honorable Dr. Hubert Minn, is imploring Bahamians and residents to take this weather system very seriously. As a national weekend lockdown was scheduled to come into effect today, the Prime Minister made several announcements based on the location and nature of the storm. He said effective at noon today, all government offices will close to allow staff to prepare for the storm. To prepare for Tropical Storm Isaias, this weekend's lockdown will be relaxed to allow for storm preparations and to respond following the passage of this storm. Effective Friday, the 31st of July, 2020, a curfew will be in place from 10 p.m to 5 a.m. This will remain in effect until further notice. I also wish to announce that based on current indicators and data provided by health officials, a lockdown will still be necessary following the passage of this storm. Current indicators and data reveal that much stronger protective and mitigating measures are absolutely necessary and will have to be implemented. The Prime Minister reminded Bahamians and residents that they should only venture out of their property for emergencies this weekend. This weekend, food stores, water depots, pharmacies, and gas stations will be permitted to be open on Saturday until 8 p.m. if weather permits. Hardware stores will be permitted to be open until 8 p.m. on Friday as well as Saturday until 8 p.m. Persons will be permitted to move around for the purposes of storm preparation and to respond to any emergencies during and after the storm. As we are in a surge in cases, especially in New Providence and Grand Bahama, and the spread of the virus to other islands and keys, it is now even more critical that everyone practices COVID-19 preventive guidelines during this hurricane. The National Emergency Management Agency's Emergency Operations Center was partially activated at 6 o'clock last evening. Representatives of the emergency support function groups will be in place around the clock to closely monitor the system and guide the country through its course. NEMA's director, Captain Stephen Russell. Designated shelters were activated and will be managed with COVID-19 protocols. Shelters are managed by trained personnel comprising of social services workers, members of the Royal Bahamas Defense Force and Royal Bahamas Police Force, and other volunteers. Healthcare professionals will also be on standby. The Royal Bahamas Defense Force vessels have been deployed and began the hurricane avoidance patrols. The roll and roll vessel has an impact team on board. Also on board are heavy duty equipment for the debris clearings, and NEMA has placed dry food and water on board the ships that can be taken into the impacted areas as necessary. All additional impact teams, search and rescue teams, and shelter managers have all been briefed and placed on standby should they be called upon to respond. Now, as Hurricane Isaias continues to make its track towards the Bahamas, the Ministry of Disaster Preparedness, Management and Reconstruction, along with its relative partners, are putting their preparedness plans into high gear. Officials of several relevant agencies in Grand Bahamas say they are in a state of readiness. Here's Shamila Mezik. 
Minister for Disaster Preparedness Management and Reconstruction, the Honorable Aram Lewis says his ministry is closely monitoring the developments of Tropical Storm Isaias and he's encouraging all Bahamians to make the necessary preparations as the country braces for the potential impact of the storm. The ministry is conscious of the fact that we are indeed living in a multi-hazard context. With that being said, though we must prepare for Mother Nature's unwelcome fury, while examining the other side of this conundrum, we cannot magnify the battle against COVID-19. So please, practice social distancing at the grocery stores and at the hardware stores. Wear your mask and only leave your home if absolutely necessary. The minister says they do not intend to mobilize all of the shelters on Grants Bahama due to the pending impact of the storm. He's stressing the importance of residents staying at home. If your home is able to withstand tropical storm, this is only intended to be a, well, projected to be a rainmaker. If at all necessary, please stay at home. We want everyone to pay attention, prepare as best as you can, abide by COVID-19 protocol. And again, for God's sake, only if necessary, we ask you to leave your homes and go to the shelters. We will be making um, provisions, if necessary, to evacuate residents of uh, Swedenski, as we did during Tropical Storm Arthur. Discussions are already um, being held with the um, with NEMO, as well as our transporta uh, transportation squad. Now, as of Friday, July 31st at 8 a.m., the following shelters will be opened to the public. Um, for the West, Kondahama, we are looking at um, primarily Bethel Deliverance Center, and we have Central Zion Baptist Church um, in case of redundancy. For um, the city of Freeport, we are looking at primarily St. George's High School and Gymnasium, um, with redundancies being um, uh, held at Morris Moore Primary. And all those facilities, the contractor has been advised. Um, we have debris removed from those areas to ensure that we don't have any projectiles or having any debris floating around in the event that we are flooding. Grants Bahama Power Company Director of Customer Operations, Nikita Mullings, is assuring residents that they have activated their storm response plan. We want to remind our customers and the public that there is no planned control shutdown. The system is designed to protect itself, and so what it will do is take itself out um, as it sees fit. With the storm forecasting to be a tropical storm, we do expect there to be some isolated outages. Um, crews will respond as long as it is safe to do so, as long as there is no lightning and the winds do die down. We want the public to be reminded that 352-8411 is the number that they should call in the event they do experience an outage. Um, many times, especially if it is isolated, we do not know unless the customers do call in. And GB Utility Company Director of Operations, Filter Grant, says they are also in a state of readiness. We're taking the threat of this storm event extremely seriously. We've learned very hard and difficult lessons from Dorian and Matthew, and we've taken those lessons to better shape our plans. Today, we can announce that we have adequate hurricane inventory stocks on island and secured and ready in the event of the threat. We've secured the water depots. We've ensured that we have protected our assets and equipment, and our team are in standby to be able to safely supply water as long as we can. I'd like to say that our plans do not call for, under tropical storm threat, a shutdown of water. If the, st if the storm should threaten and sorry, strengthen and that changes, we'll advise the public. Jamila Mizek, Sadness Network News. Oh, and, and Mayor Guana Administrator Leonard Dames tells us that preparations are in place and all stakeholders met yesterday to ensure that all systems are in place and up to date. Actually, throughout the year, uh, starting from May, we would have our disaster consultative committee meetings whereby all of the stakeholders and head of the government department we come together so as to prepare for moments like this. We also met with the heavy duty operators so that if any event we need assistance with the equipment that they will be willing to assist. The medical team, they have their supplies and they ensure that all persons in need of their medication that they have at least two weeks supplies. The police, BPL, water and sewage, PTC, all of the heads of government, department, they were at the meeting and they reported. We have at least about three satellite phones 
the police has a solid phone, the administrator has a phone, the nurse, the health team has a phone, and also PTC has a phone. We also ensured that the district council that they were able to pick up the garbage collection earlier. Administrator Dame says the various shelters in Mayaguana have also been prepared and other measures implemented for any impending, impending emergency. The shelter managers and all of the shelters that they have been activated according to the protocols and instructions from NEMA. The SWIFT rescue team, they were also in the meeting. We also had the PPL. They were there and they ensured that the power will be disconnected whenever the weather deteriorates so as to save the integrity of the electrical grid, the system. There is one person at the Bourne Fish Lodge here on the island, one visitor, one guest. So all of the emergency support systems we are on standby. We are in contact with the National Emergency Operations Center in Nassau, and we basically here... It's starting to rain, the wind is starting to pick up, but we here at the command center just in a state of readiness so as to rattle the tropical storm at this time. We're also hearing from the administrator out of Central Andros, Glenn Lightbourne, on how that island and the surrounding communities are preparing for the hurricane. Central Andros had already started its preparations earlier this week. And preparations continue today, and the finalization of those preparations will be completed. The expectations or forecast is that we will see it increase to Category 2 storm. In the Central Angeles District, we have met as committees. We've already indicated to our different essential committees what our plans are. Starting yesterday, the airport authority sent out announcements that those cars that are parked in the area of the airport were to be removed. Our essential committees consist of communications, which is led by our police department. I can affirm and aver that our command radios are in working order. Our satellite radios are set. Preparing for any storm remains a priority for residents over in Ragged Island. Deputy Chief Counselor Alfred Francis told us about preparations there. I have spoken with counselors and we have decided to get out the old innocent Anglican Church, which is our designated hurricane shelter, if needs be. We have ample hurricane supplies, canned goods, water, flashlights and lanterns. We have DHF radios for anyone uh, to maintain communication if anyone was to go to rescue anyone. This har this hurricane comes during a pandemic and as shelters start to activate, COVID-19 protocols must still be adhered to. What we've had to do is identify the schools which have smaller classrooms um, rather than having a large amount of persons in the various gymnasiums of the schools. And so with the classrooms, then it means that we have to limit the amount of persons in each classroom. And so the social distancing is still a fact, in effect for the three to six feet um, to be able to accommodate persons and for them to have the safe zone. We are going to have wash stations um, in place so that persons can sanitize. Also, two hand sanitizers will be available. Having to go outside to use the restrooms, well, we have done it before in Grand Bahama because I would have been in Grand Bahama on for several hurricanes. And so I can say to you, though, that there is a way that that, will, that matter will be addressed. At each shelter, there is or there will be medical personnel 
And with that understanding, what we require is that when persons will come into the shelter, we aim to see how best that we can do temperature checks with them. A designated spot will be identified for at each shelter for persons who present with any symptoms of COVID-19. Well, coming up after the break, we're here with the Member of Parliament for Pinewood, Ruben Rumming. He's doing a big effort to help his community today. Also, he'll be talking about flooding in that area as we approach this hurricane. That coming up after the break. Relax. Enjoy. Savor. Unwind. And exhale. Knowing we've got you covered every step of the way. Find out why we pride ourselves on being the largest and oldest insurance agency in the Bahamas. Log on to jsjohnson.com for more information and like us on Facebook. J.S. Johnson Insurance Agents and Brokers, giving you peace of mind. Bonaventure Medical Laboratory at East Avenue, Centerville, and Sandyport celebrates 20 years of providing quality laboratory services with timely results. While partnering with your physicians and insurance companies, we have expanded into our modernized facility providing EKG testing, the latest in gonorrhea and chlamydia STD tests, rapid tests, paternity screens, online reporting of results, and also phlebotomy training. Visit our call Bonaventure Medical Lab, open daily at 7.30 a.m. and Saturdays at 8 a.m. or visit our Sandyport or Southside Clinic location. It's the beginning of the hurricane season and Fidelity Bank is giving you one less thing to worry about. We're not able to control a storm or its path, but we can prepare for it as much as possible. With every debt consolidation loan, Fidelity is giving away fully loaded hurricane kits valued at $200 with all the hurricane essentials you'll need to weather the unexpected storms of life. It's that easy. Sign up for a debt consolidation loan, open an ASO savings or fixed deposit, and walk away with a free hurricane kit. At Fidelity, we're committed to helping you through these difficult times. Fidelity. We're good for you. We Buy You Sell offers the best in impact windows and doors. The first line of defense in protecting your home and family with premium designs and affordable pricing. We can make your dream home a reality. We also stock a wide variety of tiles such as porcelain, mosaic, and plank tiles. We offer the lowest rates in the country. Located at number 163 Robinson Road, call 677-2856 or 324-6427. We buy, you sell. Come and see us today. Hi, welcome to Dream Girls. We offer a wide variety of hair, hair care, and your everyday beauty needs. Here at Dream Girls, we carry a wide variety of products for natural or relaxed hair, such as ORS, Hair Care, and Shea Moisture. We also carry a large selection of weaving, braiding, and crochet hair. You can expect to find a private wig room, a large variety of products, and service with a smile. Whether you're shopping for a party, a corporate event, or your everyday working woman, Dream Girls can make your dream become a reality. Live your dream, experience your dream, Dream Girls. We have three convenient locations to serve you. Village Road Shopping Center, Prince Charles Shopping Center, and Legacy Plaza located on Prince Charles next to BTC Cash and Go. Here at Dream Girls, enhancing beauty becomes your reality. Hi, I'm Dr. Pinder. During this global pandemic, we ask for you to be responsible. As we fight the COVID-19 virus together, we would like to encourage you to do the following. Wash your hands. Cover your mouth and nose with a flex elbow or tissue when coughing and sneezing. Practice social distancing by staying six feet apart. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. And if you must go out, wear a mask. We stay here for you. Please stay home for us. To those of you on the front line, we salute you as we continue this fight together. This message has been brought to you by the Ministry of Health in conjunction with GD Media Solutions and this television station. in the tropics result in the upgrade of tropical storm Isaias into a hurricane. The system is expected to dump much rain over the Bahamas. Chief Meteorologist Basil Dean joins us live in studio tracking the storm. Good morning, Basil. 
Good morning, LaDawn. Well, we have the latest in on uh, Hurricane Isai. It is at uh, 5 o'clock this morning. The center of circulation was located at 20.9 degrees north, uh, longitude uh, 73.1 west. That's moving towards the uh, west, north, to northwest, pardon me, at 17 miles per hour. So we have a slight reduction in that forward speed once again. But maximum sustained wind has increased to 80 miles per hour, making it a Category 1 hurricane as it continues to Trek. It has already passed uh, the island of Inagua, but they're still uh, feeling some of those heavy rain showers on the island of Inagua. But those uh, rain bands will be moving closer towards Crooked Island and Acklands within the next uh, hour or two. So residents in Crooked Island actually should brace themselves for some heavy rains and, of course, some increasing winds as well as this system continues to move towards the north and west. We anticipate that there could be some slight increase in intensification as it tracks through, but uh, we, ant we anticipate that it will remain at least a Category 1 until it exits the Bahamas sometime on Sunday. So there you have it. Satellite pictures showing uh, a broad area of showers covering most of the southeast Bahamas, including the Turks and Caicos Islands, and those showers and Strong winds will be spreading into the central Bahamas by noon today. Thanks a lot, Basil. This hurricane is expected to dump heavy rain in its path here in the capital. Pinewood Gardens is one of those areas prone to flooding. But the area member of parliament is taking proactive measures to assist residents. Charles Fisher joins us live with that information. Good morning, everybody. What a beautiful shot we see here. We are here in Yamakraw, but the big objective is to get sand to those persons living in the Pinewood area. And we are joined by the Member of Parliament for Pinewood, Ruben Roming, this morning. He is doing a big initiative. Ruben, first of all, we know Pinewood is one of the most flooded areas when it comes to rain. Now we're approaching this Category 1 hurricane. I see that you have bags and stuff ready. What is the objective today? What are your plans? No, the objective is to improve upon what we did last year, um, learn from the mistakes of last year and to move further on right now. Today, uh, you know, we've been at this from 5 a.m. preparing for the volunteers. Uh, we do a lot of activity of Pinewood here at my house. This is like a staging area. Everybody come to my house and we do things. Um, I want to avoid the long lines, people hassling like it was done before, because to me, I believe we should do things with dignity. Uh, I want people to have proper sandbags and not bags of sand. Mm -hmm. And so what we're doing today, we're going to be, uh, we're ready prepared for our hurricane preparedness program, and we're going to be doing about 2,500 to 3,000 sandbags uh, this morning, and we're going to distribute them throughout the hot spots in the Pinewood community. The volunteers should be here um, with about in the next 45 minutes, and we'll be pulling all those things together. Could you put it right over there by the, the big truck? Is the dump? Big truck right is there. coming in right now. Right Will there. you be riding around passing all these bags or is a spot that they can come collect? Um, Pinewood is a strategic plan. First of all, our home security is firstly our problem mm -hmm. then it's our collective problem as a community then it's a governmental problem um, um, that we all must work together on so i was i'm confident that persons who've been dealing with this historic uh flooding issue have some plan in place my job is to fill those gaps especially in those hotspot area I'm one of those who don't believe, and if I have enough to, to effectively address 10 issues, I'm not going to spread it over 100 and help nobody. So we're going to take these bags. We know exactly where the, from scientific evidence and also on the ground evidence, where these things need to be placed and where they need to go. We will still have a certain allotment that will be there for whosoever comes, and we will be delivering those where we need to. That's good right there. Hold on. Okay, so let's take a walk now over here as you talk about, you talk about this hot spot. Raman trying to do two jobs in one. Let's, yeah. let's, we're looking here at this map right now and you have put some hot spots. Uh, explain to the public what it's all about. Well, you know, Pinewood have a historic issue with the drainage uh, problem. Um, I, 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 too, even before coming to Pinewood, being sick and tired of the politics of it all. I just want to first let the people know that progress have actually been made. This is regular data that I travel with me all the time. If they listened to the last uh, budget debate, they would have heard that uh, the government now has invested into a flood remediation pilot program. I'm not going to say too much about it because I don't want to preempt the Minister of Work with further details. So we're actually moving towards having something actually done um, in the Pinewood community. When you're looking at the color in of the, the map, meantime, you see yellow, green. In green. the meantime, this it helps us with the data. Uh, this shows all the high, the hot spots within Pinewood. The red indicates area that is like about three feet um, below sea level. In some, instances, in some instances, the water table is just like six inches beneath houses. There are some houses you just can't do anything with. You could seal the house all around, but the water comes through the floor. So we want to be as wise as we can in the distribution. And when the volunteers come in, we're going to familiarize them with the 
the map. Uh, we're going to have where persons can just come to the constituency. There'll be a certain amount there. And the rest we'll try to take uh, to the areas where they are uh, most needed according to the scientific information. And you can see that clearly here um, where you have Sequoia Street. You, you see the area of Sapodilla and a high density red. Then you see the higher area in Pinewood, Avocado, Walnut, Gannep. And then you see how avocados, uh, Sour Sop, and Maple Street doors. We, we want to try to target as much as we can. Now, it's very simple. I know you can't help everybody, but by the grace of God, we will help as many as we can. And as we approach this hurricane that's scheduled to get here in the capital sometime tomorrow morning, you're wanting to your residents there in Pinewood. Oh, man, listen here. We've been, the Bahamas has historically been in a hurricane belt. Uh, we're well aware of what we need to do. Let's take whatever precautions. You young men out there, you know the senior citizens. You live in this community. Help those. You've seen those who've been impacted. There may be some persons who may have help, need help at raising and elevating their furnishing. There may be some who just may help settling debris. After you check your house, take a minute and check the house to the left and to the right of you. Maybe there may be some things that need to be secured. Uh, we thank God this hurricane is not as strong as it, it, it could have been, uh, but we, un we understand that water damage is a major issue we're still recovering from. In the meantime, today, we have a few senior citizens' homes that I myself, we would have dropped some um, roofing supply to, and we're going to make sure that they're properly in place. There are going to be probably about three roofs that we're going to be doing some repairs on, uh, myself and a few of the teams, so we're going to be splitting up. Uh, there are a couple of senior citizens whose houses we identified uh, a few weeks ago that have dead trees too close to the house. Um, we're not trying to say we're a tree cutting service, but we, we're, we're going to finish up that work as well and do as much as we can so we can rattle this storm successfully. A very busy day for Ruben Roming and his crew as they transverse through Pinewood Gardens and make sure that everybody's safe. That's going to do it here from Yamakura, but all the action will be happening there in Pinewood later on this afternoon. They'll be giving out bikes, they'll be cutting trees, they'll be checking on just about everybody. And like he said, if you have a neighbor on the side of you, please, after you've discovered your property, make sure they are all right, because we all are our brothers' keepers. Back to you, Ladon. Thanks a lot, Fisher. Now, hurricanes can be a scary thing for many, especially children, who may be too young to process the trauma that comes with experiencing natural disasters and with the current hurricane anxiety may be brewing for many. Our news team spoke with child psychologist Dr. Novia Carter-Lukey on some tips to keep your children calm during the storm. Conversation needs to always be positive. All right, you can't um, approach the topic from the very, oh my God, we're going to go through a hurricane. This is going to be horrible. People are going to die. No, we have to keep it positive. We have to make sure people realize that as a country, we're resilient. As a country and as a people, no matter how bad now negative things may appear, we have to look at the positive aspect of it. And so going into the tropical storm, it may be a lot of rain. It may be a lot of winds, but we have to remember that we're going to be able to get through it together. And so I just encourage in persons keep positive parents don't um, traumatize the children by making it seem like this the worst possible thing that could happen at, at this stage in our country's development but let's just keep it positive Carter Lukey says getting children involved in preparation can also be very helpful you need to know what the resources are available on your island and even what resources you currently have. So it's important for people to know who are the mental health professionals in the area. What are some of the things that I, if I realize that I can't cope, if I realize already that my house may not be as secured as it should be, realizing that the Department of Social Services have shelters that are going to open as soon as this afternoon. All right, so people need to know what are the resources, where are those resources available, and what do I need in terms of food, clothing, shelter. That's going to be paramount right now so that when you communicate with your children, they know that it's going to be okay. Now to our COVID-19 update. The Ministry of Health has confirmed three COVID-19 related deaths on Thursday, bringing the total number of COVID-19 deaths to 14 in this country. This comes as a number of cases continue to climb with an additional 24 confirmed cases yesterday. Here in New Providence, there are 20 new cases recorded with the other four on Grand Bahama. There are now 508 cases on record for this country. Now regarding the three new deaths, health officials will provide more details at a live press conference at 3 o'clock this afternoon.
The Ministry of Tourism announcing that health officials advise the competent authority that a negative COVID-19 test will not be required by Bahamians and residents as hotel guests. Individuals, however, must wear masks, practice social distancing, and adhere to sanitization protocols. Additionally, indoor dining will be closed on those properties. The Royal Bahamas Police Force will be conducting surveillance of hotel properties to ensure compliance. Properties will be fined and or closed if they are found violating any of the emergency order protocols. Now, if you're hoping to head off to school in the United States, keep in mind there are limited available appointments. The U.S. Embassy noting in a release that priority will be given to those applicants starting or continuing studies for the upcoming fall semester to ensure they start the school year on time. All applicants are urged to follow strict health and safety protocols to prevent the spread of COVID-19 as posted outside the embassy as well as inside its consular waiting area. These include wearing a mask at all times and maintaining a six-foot distance. Failure to follow such rules will result in the application or the applicant being turned away. Meantime, the embassy says it does not yet have a firm timeline for other visa services. The COVID-19 pandemic impacting the timely disbursement of maintenance payments in domestic and matrimonial matters in the magistrate's court. Chief, Just Chief Justice Sir Brian Maurice says while measures are in place at the magistrate's court for persons to pay and receive monies, there are some challenges. I have no doubt that there are individuals who may have had problems actually getting their money. And those problems, some of them have come to our attention and we have resolved some of them. I'm sure others have not. And there have been certain logistical problems in terms of access to files, limited staff, shift work, um, and that sort of thing. But the point I would wish to make is that, that that service is never closed under the emergencies. We've continued to provide that, albeit there are some difficulties that we've had to work through, and I'm sure we continue to have them. We try to, to mitigate those as much as possible, and we're continuing to work on that. As to whether persons have been able to file new applications for child support at this time, the Chief Justice responded this way. And that has not been possible during this period of time. I'm happy to say that that is, is going to cease to exist as of next week, Monday, the 4th of August, because we are reopening the registry of the Magistrates Court, and persons will now be able to file new claims, not only domestic and matrimonial, but also civil claims, landlord and tenant claims. We are now going to start processing these claims and providing dates. Stay close. We've got more right after this. You're watching The Morning Edition. Simpson Hurricane Wind Scale was developed in 1971 by civil engineer Herbert Safir and meteorologist Robert Simpson, who was the director of the U.S. National Hurricane Center. It was introduced to the public in 1973 and began to be widely used a year later, inspired by the Richter scale that measures earthquakes. The Saffir Simpson scale was divided into five categories. Originally, the scale included predicted barometric pressures associated with the various wind speeds, as well as the relative kinds of damage that could be anticipated. However, because those predictions were found to be very inaccurate just a few years ago, the warning system was changed to include only the wind speeds, which were also adjusted upwards in the higher categories. A Category 1 hurricane has wind speeds between 74 and 95 miles per hour. A Category 2 hurricane has wind speeds between 96 and 110 miles per hour. A Cat 3, 111 to 129 miles per hour. A Cat 4, 130 to 156 miles per hour. And a Category 5 hurricane will have wind speeds from 157 miles per hour and up. This public service announcement has been brought to you by the Broadcasting Corporation of the Bahamas in conjunction with the National Emergency Management Agency. Let's stay COVID free. Remember the three S's sanitize, social distance, 
and stay inside. Across the entire span of the Bahamas, there is a strategic spread of national parks, which play a vital role in protecting the survival and well-being of diverse wildlife, as well as Bahamian livelihoods. The Andrews Westside National Park, for instance, consists of thriving bonefish populations, the healthiest stands of red mangroves found in the Bahamas, breeding and nursery areas that support wildlife such as snappers, groupers, lobsters, and threatened and endangered species like marine turtles, the Andrus rock iguana, and the flamingo. If we do not effectively safeguard our natural treasures, vital habitats, which include nursery and breeding areas, will become vulnerable to a number of threats impacting the way we live. We must remember to do our part to maintain the integrity of the natural environment. Remember, if we take care of nature, nature will take care of us. Welcome back. Well, more bread should be available over in Grand Bahama over the coming days. Italia Hall has more on the action taken in this regard. Reports say that not much bread was available in some grocery stores this week and that all bakeries on Grand Bahama were closed. While our ZNS News team visited Mr. Baker, located downtown Freeport, and owner Garnet Knowles says that he's now open after receiving authorization. But earlier this week, he was questioned as to why he was open and to close his doors immediately. I operate a snack shop store, real convenience store next door, so I bake my bread in the back there, put it in there to sell. He told me I can't do it. Okay. So, he said, yeah, they shut it down. He says due to the fact that he operates a convenience store, he opened his store on Wednesday, but was shut down by police once again. The business owner says some 600 residents visited the store looking to purchase bread. People are very frustrated. I didn't realize Mr. Baker had that much loyal customer committed people. They're very loving. The things I hear them say, hey, this is must be family. <laughs> it's very interesting to, to comment some of them made. Now, Noel says he believes that bakeries should have never been closed as bread is a necessity, especially for residents when preparing for a storm. A part of a pot shop selling, parts, and a bakery closed? Come on. You can't eat uh, pots during a hurricane, and with bread, you know, power out, you can make it, you always could eat. You know, slam bomb, jam bomb, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I think it's, the rebel and the torrents need to revamp the whole situation and start listening to the people and analyze the whole system all over again. Reports reaching our newsroom say Ronnie's Bakery in Pinders Point was also shut down this week. But when we visited the local bakery on Thursday, their doors were open and residents could be seen purchasing bread. Over at Western Bakery, another popular location for bread, they were closed to the public. Well, after speaking with management, we learned that after writing to the relevant authorities, they were told that they are not allowed to open the bakery, which is attached to a restaurant, but they can deliver wholesale products to the various stores. Italia Hall, ZNS Network News. For the first time in a very long time, there will be no Junkanoo on Bay Street this holiday season after the powers that be opted against it. Here's Amajal Knowles. Well, if you were looking forward to celebrating with your favorite Junkanoo groups on Bay Street this Christmas holiday, those hopes were officially dashed today as the Junkanoo Corporation of New Providence, along with the Ministry of Culture, announcing that the 2020-2021 Junkanoo parades will be postponed. The JCNP saying after meeting with the Prime Minister and Culture Minister, the Honorable Denisha Roll, and the Junkanoo community to discuss the impact of COVID-19, they all agreed that due to health and safety concerns for Junkanooers and the public as well, as well as the current financial constraints, it would be best not to hold the parades which attracts thousands this year. Jonkanoo community has also began the process of planning a phased approach to safely relaunch Jonkanoo and alternative activities throughout the country. Meantime, the Ministry of Culture issued a statement noting that due to the current status of the COVID-19 pandemic, the Ministry of Health cannot support hosting the cultural event at this time. The Ministry has engaged a series of meetings with Jonkanoo stakeholders to consider the best alternatives for celebrating the country's beloved and premier cultural expression. Our new 
News team reached out to the spokesperson of the Shell Socks and Superstars for her thoughts on the cancellation. Of course, it is a it's a loss for all of us, and we actually feel it, um, especially because we are two-time champions, and we would want to go to Bay Street and defend our title, especially for music, choreograph, having swept the entire parade. It's it's a huge um, it's a huge occasion for us to to miss an actual parade, but because of the pandemic and the laws of the land mandated under the Commonwealth of the Bahamas is not going to have uh, their parades. So of course we will acquiesce to what exactly has been requested of us and we will go under the guidance of our chairman for the Saxon Superstars, Mr. Toby Austin, and we will do what he has recommended for us to do and that is to stand down. We're not having the parade um, for, us to, for us to comply with the general orders of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas and for, from the chairman of the JCNP, Mr. Dion Miller. And so that is exactly what we'll do. Again, plans are being made for alternative events to help keep the junk new spirit alive. For ZNS Network News, I'm Amajal Knowles. Stay close. The Morning Edition is back right after this quick break. Hi, I'm Dr. Pinder. During this global pandemic, we ask for you to be responsible. As we fight the COVID-19 virus together, we would like to encourage you to do the following. Wash your hands. Cover your mouth and nose with a flex elbow or tissue when coughing and sneezing. Practice social distancing by staying six feet apart. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. And if you must go out, wear a mask. We stay here for you. Please stay home for us. To those of you on the front line, we salute you as we continue this fight together. This message has been brought to you by the Ministry of Health in conjunction with GD Media Solutions and this television station. Long time no see. You hear me? Long time no see. Boiled fish, stewed fish, stew conch. I love it all. Tourists come here to take our tours, experience our sun, sand, and sea, and they also spend money around town. I used to see a bunch of hogfish around here, but nowadays I hardly see any. You protect one area, the fish do they ding, make a bunch of babies that spread all over the sea. What's the problem? If we protect, certain parts of our sea, it keeps all parts working right. I was against that phrase, but knowing what I know now, I totally agree with having marine protected areas. I support marine protected areas. We support marine protected areas. Look for Bahamas Protected on Facebook. Sign the petition. Sign the petition. <laughs> Watch our live channel to keep up with what's going on in the nation. News updates, we've got you covered. Tune into our radio stations with just a swipe. On the road, on the go, we're here with you. Available for download on the App Store and the Google Play Store. And it's time now to do some push-ups with downtown Natasha Brown. lies in our daily routine and believe it or not what we put in our mouth thank you for joining downtown for another awesome segment today i have got a very good routine that you will enjoy with just using a resistance band let's get right to it
Until next time, I am downtown Natasha Brown, keeping you healthy, energized, and most importantly, fit. The Ministry of Education will begin the 2020-2021 school year on September 21st with 100% online learning. A transition will be made from online learning to hybrid or blended learning on October 5th, 2020 if circumstances permit. Learning models will vary on each island as one size does not fit all. The Ministry of Education encourages parents to secure a device for their children to engage in online learning. The models are face-to-face in-person instruction, hybrid or blended learning, and full online learning. The hybrid model selected will require students to attend school for three days and engage in online learning for two days. Parents with resources and the capability to homeschool their children are encouraged to do so. Free Wi-Fi is available to students at public libraries. Care centers will offer supervised online learning to students. Movement on campus will include one-way movement, staggered breaks, no gatherings of more than five persons, janitresses will restrict bathroom use. Bus and ferry operators must add dividers to limit direct contact, ensure drivers use the same vehicle and same work schedule, face masks and shields are required, use hand sanitizers and wash hands often. Lunch protocols. Students are encouraged to bring a home packed lunch. However, grab and go lunches will be available at school. Social distancing is mandatory. Sharing is not allowed. Arrival on campus. Students and visitors must wear face masks or shields. Hands must be sanitized at the gate. Temperature checks will be conducted upon entering the school campus. The instructional program for face-to-face, -face, there is a requirement of 20 square feet per student. Temperature check protocols. There will be a school nurse on campus. A second temperature check will be conducted if a temperature reading is above 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit. An individual is required to see the nurse if the third temperature check is elevated. All staff should complete standard health checks prior to leaving home. Remain at home if ill or symptoms appear. Parents are to complete standard health checks on their children prior to leaving home. Children are to remain at home if ill. Classroom setup. Desks will be three feet apart facing one direction. Teachers will monitor the movement of students. up on our streets our Charles Fisher and the morning team are in the Eastern District good morning again Charles the traffic report is sponsored by Bahamas first first in insurance today tomorrow good morning here from Prince Charles we are once again joined now by Sergeant Cressonier Johnson and Cressonier first of all give us an update on traffic matters last night. Okay, over the 24-hour period, you had a total of 10 accidents involving damages, one accident involving injury, and five hit-and-run accidents. At this time, we still have 15 persons who remain hospitalized as a result of being involved in a traffic accident. Now, today, water depots, food stores, curbside, those persons going to there and those here expect to be very crowded as people make last-minute preparation for some work. Yes, and just a word to the general public based on what you said about these curbside services. If you're experiencing those areas, you're going to traverse those areas, we ask you as much as possible to be mindful of the fact that there are going to be offices and personnel for those companies there to, to assist you. So as much as possible, you want to adhere to whatever it is that they're telling you, their guidelines, and however they have it set up. Because if you do not, then you are not only inconveniencing yourself, you're inconveniencing all the other persons who are waiting to get that service. So as much as possible, we ask you to, when you get in those areas, adhere to the guidelines and to not block up those intersections. Remember, you have other road users who need to get to the various places to receive whatever services. We ask you as much as possible to be, uh, to, to be your brother's keeper and look out for the other motorists and other persons who are using the street. Now, it was announced last night that curfew and some restrictions may be relaxed. 
persons may want to get out tomorrow, ride around while the storm is on to get to see what is happening. This is a no-no. We want to discourage this as much as possible. Please stay at home. If Stay at home. Remember, we're still dealing with this um, pandemic. We're still dealing with storm conditions. So as much as possible, you're going to have some, some winds, some rains. It's expected. So, ex so we're asking the general public as much as possible. If you do not have to go on the street. If you require even medical services, contact the 911 and 919 hotlines to have them come to you. Well, once again, thank Christina Johnson for joining us here on Prince Charles. Once again, word to the wise, do not block up those curbside. And if you don't have to be out on the streets, Please stay at home. Ladon? Well, it's time for our look at what's happening in the tropics. And uh, at this hour, we have heavy rains that are taking place on the island of uh, Inagua as uh, Isa Ia makes its trek through the southeast Bahamas. Now, outside of our studios, we are under partly cloudy skies, temperature 81 degrees, relative humidity quite rich at 83%. We have easterly winds at 9 miles bar. The barometric pressure, 1,015.0 millibars. That's 29.97 inches, and your pressure is steady. Now at uh, 5 o'clock uh, this morning, the center of Issa Ia was located at 20.9 degrees north, longitude 73.3 west. That puts the center smack on the southern coast of the island of Inagua, and it's moving toward the northwest at around 17 miles per hour with maximum sustained winds of 80 miles per hour. Now this position well, this track, I should say, will take it across the island of Inagua within the next uh, three hours or so, and then it will take aim for Crooked Island Acklands, coming very close to those islands uh, sometime uh, later this morning. The next island on the list will be Long Island, so the strong tropical storm force winds will approach Long Island sometime around noon today, and the final uh, island that will be impacted at least during the daytime hours will be Exuma, and those uh, strong winds will start impacting Exuma sometime time around 3 o'clock this afternoon. So residents in all of these islands in the southeast and central Bahamas are asked to remain indoors and away from windows until the all clear is given. And that's because of the heavy rains that we anticipate and the strong gusty winds. Repeating the 5 o'clock coordinates, 20.9 degrees north, longitude 73.3 west. That puts it smack on the south coast of Inagua at this hour, moving toward the northwest at 17 miles per hour, maximum sustained wind holding at 80 miles per hour. LaDon? Thanks a lot, Basil. And that's a wrap for us this morning for the entire team. I'm LaDon Davis. Make it a great day, everyone.